Good morning, Mr. Steinhardt. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Welcome to Channel 15. Thank you for inviting me to Channel 15, our public access channel. It's that time of year again, isn't yep. it? That's good. Why don't we start off by uh, letting everyone know where and when. Sure. Uh, the most important things we want to remind people of is that the um, annual town elections are going to be tomorrow. To, uh, today is uh, Monday, May 13th. So tomorrow at um, 7 a.m. through 8 p.m. Tuesday. Uh, yes. Tuesday are the annual town elections for Southwick. So we want to remind people to... Uh, to come and vote at Town Hall. There's 13 hours of availability where that can happen. And then the issue we're here today for is to go over the both the special and annual town meeting um, articles that are going to be coming up a week from tomorrow, which is going to be May 21st. May 21st. Which is really a, a, you know, a pretty late time for a town meeting. It's probably mm. the latest it can be, because wow. the way the way the Tuesdays ran. So May 21st, uh, Yep. Special town meetings at 6.30? 6.30 at the uh, high school. At the high school. And so we, we're, you know, that's for the year-end housekeeping items. And then at 7 o'clock, there's going to be the annual town meeting where we go through our budget authorization and uh, pieces of legislation. Excellent. So uh, which articles you Let's want to start with this special town meeting at 6.30. We'll go through a brief explanation. Of sure. Very, very similar to any other year, Dennis. Um, we have to uh, address some year-end issues. Uh, the first article is the transfer from existing funds to cover negotiated agreements for staff and cost of living adjustments for staff uh, for several dozen employees. And again, I want to remind people that both the special and annual town meeting um, warrants are available to view online, online. on our web page, www.southwickma.org. Go to the calendar, click on the date, right. click on the May 21st date, and it'll come up with both the special yep. and the annual town meeting. So they're there, um, you know, you can, and then also tomorrow at elections, people can pick up the annual town report. Excellent. And the budget document is online, which is the Finance Committee's handbook. And that would be in the online under the Finance Committee? At the, uh, that's online page? under the documents, under documents section two. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep, and, and the article explanations that you and I are going to go over today, those are going to be put online, too. Beautiful. So we want to make sure we have as much explanations and information and transparency on there. Before the meeting. Right. So, again, going back to the first article, um, you know, it's to address the cost of living adjustments, and they're going to be coming from existing uh, accounts, salary reserve accounts. And then also we have to backfill expenses for people that have been out with um, – job injuries or on extended sicknesses or FMLA leaves. Mm -hmm. So this is just a part of doing business that any large municipality or any large organization has to do to uh, follow the law. That's all covered under Article 1. Right, that's all under Article 1. Excellent. Now Article 2. Article 2, there again, um, you know, we have two issues here we, we want to address uh, for operational expenses. And this is for the uh, the snow and ice uh, deficit each year. Uh, it's an exercise that towns do, and um, we prefer to do it um, before June 30th to close the books on it, because if we don't um, transfer these funds from existing funds, uh, two things will happen. Those existing funds will go away uh, to next year's free cash, and they won't be available uh, till next year. And... Um, we would have to add this expense on to the fall tax bill. Right, and you want to pay last year's taxes. We want to pay. We want to pay this year's expenses before this year's budget ends, okay. instead okay. of carrying a, a, a deficit forward. Okay, so that's one item, and then the other item is our um, uh, for our maintenance accounts for town hall and the public safety buildings, which is police and fire stations. We now have buildings that are over twenty years old. Oh, well, wow. it's, it's huh? it, time is flying, and, and what we're now seeing is is the, uh, you know, again the notes the notes are falling off on those buildings, the bonds. That's good. So we, we have a bigger long term um, solution that we're looking at to identify things to be done in the buildings, but we now have wear and tear on buildings that are over twenty years old. They so need maintenance. Yeah. They need maintenance, and sometimes you know we we appropriate an amount of money, and we we you know, we think it's going to last us, but uh, things happen. 
mm-hmm. during the winter. Mm-hmm. Especially winter, you know, you need a heat, heating and then cooling season. Unforeseen circumstances come up all the time. So those are just general expenses. So that covers Article 2? Yep, and then Article 3 is a couple of small capital uh, issues, and one is um, the third phase of, of dealing with some issues that had come up in the budget process each year for finishing a painting and carpeting in the um, new library, and that's for uh, because of wear and tear uh, for library uh, painting and carpeting, and this would address the director and insistent director's rooms and then those are the spaces behind the um, the counters mm-hmm. where you transact business to check out books. Yeah. The rest of the general rooms have been done. Mm. And the, uh, looks good, the conference huh? room has been done. Mm-hmm. In fact, we had a very good painter. Yeah, yeah. They did a very nice good, job. He did a very good job, this company. On budget and timely. Yep. So, and then the other item is, you know, the uh, Park and Recreation Commission has put in for another mower. Yeah. Uh, and they put it into the general budget for next year, but because they really need to have this piece of equipment sooner. Mm, season's coming up. Yeah, I mean, the mowing season's now. Yeah, it's now, it's here. So it really makes sense to get this uh, appropriation now, From the- secure this piece of equipment, and get it online with the staff, as opposed to waiting, you know, sometime during um, when the new fiscal year begins July 1st. Yeah. You've, well, got, you've got a good six, seven weeks of mowing now. Both the uh, library and Wally Park get a lot of use, so. Oh, absolutely, and, and the... Um, um, the rail trail and the rail trail because oh, yes. this, this would be used on the rail trail too. Those three items get a lot right. of use. The rail trail is a tremendous asset. So I think that covers so the uh, number four. No, nope. number four is the annual um, deposit to the other post employment benefit trust fund. And again, this is to make sure that we're trying to put aside funds for uh, people's post employment health care expenses. Uh, as opposed to um, doing it on a pay-as-you-go type basis. So this is something that our auditors um, look to uh, to recommend and that every municipality should have a trust fund set up and they should be addressing these uh, financial liabilities. So it's just good, um, a good housekeeping issue and it's just good finances to do good this. Good practice. Yeah. So that was the special. Days. That's the special. We covered all four articles for the special meeting. Yep, it's generally just a, you know, a quick meeting. 6.30. So. Well, let's hope so, because the annual meeting starts at 7 p.m. Yep. Yep. And again, the annual meeting, the first uh, article on it is to just recognize the fact that the uh, elections will have taken place, because that is, um, um, it's also when we post for the annual um, warrant uh, for the annual town meeting, we also post for the elections within it. So, and that again is happening tomorrow. And then Articles 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, are housekeeping issues, and they are the ones that help the uh, selectmen authorize uh, to operate town government, you know, accept the annual report, do short-term borrowings, um, you know, appoint minor officers, things of that nature. Every year we do that. Exactly. Mandatory. Yep, and that's something every town has to do. Housekeeping. Okay, Article 6 is a... Um, petition. So this was a voter citizen's petition. And this petition looks to change the finance committee's uh, um, members from being appointed by the town moderator to being elected. So that is something that's a uh, that was asked for by a group of citizens. So this is the mechanism that allows them to bring that issue to the floor so that there can be a discussion and a debate and a decision on it. Yeah, that sounds pretty clear. Right. Well, that's the way yeah. that's the way you know democracy works. <laughs> so, Article Seven is very much the same thing, but that relates to a citizen petition, citizen petition. is going to change the four members of the Community Preservation Committee um, who are appointees of the Select Board, who are the chief elected officer of the town, and it would make those four um, at, those appo- uh, four appointees as elected. And then those four people would join the five designees that come from the other boards that are listed in the legislation for um, historical, housing authority, park and recreation, Mm -hmm. planning board, and what was the other one there, Rob? There's nine altogether. Right. Housing, historical, park and rec, conservation. Oh, that's You should remember that one, Dennis. How can we forget? Chris, make a note of that. (laughs) 
Okay. So those, uh, again, that's another mechanism. It's a citizen petition to have a discussion on that issue and to have um, make a decision at the town meeting. Um, okay. Article 8. Um, this is a borrowing authorization because what we're starting to see is, is our borrowings are uh, being paid back and dropping off. And now we're beginning to identify other important matters that we want to have um, our bonding capacity look to for the future, which would be our road and bridge infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, very well documented by our DPW director. I'm sure. Uh, issues relating to our buildings that are being paid off, so we now need to make sure that we continue the reinvestment in those buildings in terms of new roofs when they're needed, mm -hmm. um, HVAC issues, things of that nature. And then, um, you know, other projects that we need to address for uh, rolling pieces of equipment like trucks. So this particular article is for a, uh, it's authorized the select board as road commissioners to bond uh, $2 million worth of road work. Uh, the town has a backlog of roads that must be reconstructed, mm. milled and overlaid, or repaired along with drainage and culvert activities. And, and Dennis, the amount of aid that we get from the state, which is known as Chapter 90 funds, just is not keeping up with it. Um, yeah. Local appropriations haven't been enough to reduce the backlog either. So this action must be taken to remedy that problem and make sufficient progress. You know, there was a time where people ver were very complimentary of our roads. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to go back to that point in time yeah. where people will start to, uh, you know, support what needs to happen. Well, in we town. had a rough winter, too. I mean, oh, we've had a series of rough, rough, rough winters, but we've also been using funds for design work. And in some cases, a number of funds were used for um, converting some dirt roads to paved roads. I see. And, and so some of that has put us behind. Put us behind in the repair. With, with the actual repair and overlay of other roads. So we need to go back and revisit this issue and, as they say, fix it first. Get our roads back in shape. Right. So this is. This is this um, you know initiative that we hope people will support will get us going in the right direction because we all drive to work oh, we all yeah, drive to school well aware they people need. are driving about their daily business and and really we know what we know they want good roads yeah. so yeah. this is an important made it part clear of it's been made clear so we're up to article nine mm -hmm. authorizes three hundred thousand. Right. Um, about a, um, in the last year and a half, Dennis, we had a series of different recommendations come from uh, departments and boards and committees to start looking at infrastructure within the town buildings, look at additions where necessary, or maybe newer buildings. Mm -hmm. So um, this had come through the Capital Expenditures Planning Committee. So what happened was, is last year the committee, who was made up of citizens that represent uh, businesses and, and uh, a representative of the, uh, of the moderator, uh, designees of the selectmen, members of the selectmen, and the finance committee, we really decided that what we needed was a municipal buildings conditions um, study assessment. And what happened was, is we went to town meeting last year in town meeting, uh, appropriate fifty thousand. We're able to secure another thirty-five from the planning commission. I see. Um, so we went through and we did a bunch of interviews with design firms, and we hired Tyne Bond. So they started last fall, um, and we did a uh, an assessment on our all of our municipal buildings. And the first thing that they determined that needs to be addressed is the uh, an issue with the um, fire department for masonry work hmm. and roof replacement uh, because if you look at the building it's, it's a nice building but there are some issues that need to be addressed with it that may have not have been optimal design issues uh -huh. so this is, goes back and fixes those issues and of course you know the building's over 20 years old sure it is yeah so we would like to have not had to do the masonry that soon but roofs it's not uncommon to start looking at roofs after year 20. Right. You know, you want to get 25, 30, Hopefully ideally. Hopefully, if you're lucky, yeah. So this article authorizes $300,000 um, to work on that first project. And again, as I said before, notes are starting to roll off. On, you know, the buildings haven't been finished. 
So um, now we're just reprogramming that money to start looking at what we need to do to those buildings to uh, repair them. And these are not school buildings. The school buildings have been addressed separate. under a separate debt exclusion and a separate bond issue by the schools. Mm -hmm. These relate to the police, fire, town hall, DPW, and the, and the library. So these are the five Specific buildings this five study buildings. did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that, this is the first recommended item that needs to be done. So the needs assessment has been done and now we're yep. moving on. Well, we are, we're, it, it, it's, in a, it, it's, it's being finalized, but it's preliminarily finished, and that's why this has got to be done first. Very good. So moving on to Article 10. Yep, again, uh, when I talked about other issues relating to potential bonds and paying off notes on old pieces of equipment, uh, we, we need to also address uh, issues for road construction and uh, maintenance equipment for DPW. We want to make sure that they have the appropriate tools to, you know, like paving units, patching mm -hmm. units, rollers, um, maybe some of these equipments we work on this, uh, the roadside, like the mowing units, to make sure that brush doesn't f uh, mow, um, end up growing over the sides of oh, the yeah. roads and roots. You need special equipment the to do that. So what we're looking at here is a, um, an article that's going to uh, transfer out of the stabilization fund $157,000. Uh, okay. So it's a modest amount, but it's going to give the DPW staff the tools they need to work on the projects they got to get done. And again, this is all toward making sure that when we, we go out and we do uh, pothole patching, we have a better way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And the way, you know, some of the tools they have now are just outdated or they're not appropriate. Mm -hmm. So this is the right tool. Get and, of course, better, a well-done patch, w w you know, will be just as good as the newly paved road. Yeah. So this is to address that. And that particular stabilization fund has about $2.7 in it. So this is an affordable withdrawal from that account. $157,000 out of that right. $2 million. Okay. Okay, Article 11. 11 is the, uh, what you see when you come to the elections or you come to town meeting and you get a colored document with a bunch of oh, uh, sheets. Oh, yeah. And I think this year it's going to be pink. Mm -hmm. So each year it's a different color. Color. But it's, a, um, it's the finance committee's recommendation for the different budget line items for every single municipal department. For you name the department, every department, including EMS, water, sewer, general fund, uh, the the different boards, it's got everything in it, pretty much the budget. Yeah, you know, everybody's you know. budget. It's hundreds of line items. Hundreds. And again, that's also posted online, and people can pick it up. Yes. So. Be good to do that before the meeting. Yep. Well, so we encourage people to do that because you know, Dennis, we, we, think about this. We, we've had budget hearings this year in March and then the finance committee and the selectmen had individual meetings where they went through the, the budgets and they adjusted line items to see what's affordable and what the priorities would be and of course you know the priorities have been um, the ALS funding for the ambulance mm, that's so it's not that they don't feel other items aren't important but they had to set a priority and it was determined over the last couple of years in all of the conversations we've had at budget meetings and to town meetings where we've told people that the uh, advanced life-saving uh, EMT paramedic level, which is an expensive thing, it is expensive. was, was going to be the priority, and we just do not not bring in enough money to offset it with fees. So that's why it it's has to be a tax issue. A matter of life and death. So Exactly. And, like they, and these people, these chiefs and, and the people that work with them, they're doing a great job delivering that service, and, it, and you know it's working when you dial nine one one. You know, it's you good know to people. Know that. Yes. It's good to know that, right? So that's why these, are, you know, it, it, it's a collection of public policy decisions, is what a budget is and priorities. So, but it's an important yeah. article. Okay. So once we get past Article Eleven, which usually takes the most time because there's a lot of uh, yep. information in there. Um, Article 12. Yep, and I know you're familiar with this. It's, it's, it's all our revolving accounts. Mm -hmm. Some of them, when you, once you adopt them, they're set permanently, like conservation. conservation they don't have to be re-voted every, every year. But other ones have to be voted each year. And the important thing, 
with these different accounts is they, they allow us to have our inspectors, hazmat, boat ramps, police chief lake uh, revolving, local lake permitting, um, custodial service in case people come in and use buildings. They help pay for fees to right. offset it. Counts on aging revolving account. Um, or sidewalk revolving account from developers so we can use money for sidewalks mm -hmm. to repair sidewalks. And these, that's a newer one, so that's going to be a good thing. People are going to see sidewalk work happening. And these roll over every year, so the money doesn't go right. away. Right, right, but we need to reauthorize, reauthorize it. Reauthorize for that to happen. Right, and without it, Dennis, if you wanted to do any of these things, the funds would have to come from taxation. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. No, no, that's why, the, you know, the, the finance committee and the select board are able to keep the tax rate, you know, fairly reasonable compared to other communities. That's true, very yeah. much. So this is an important thing for people to uh, to vote on that saves taxpayer money, actually. Uh, Article 13 looks familiar. Yep. 13 is your, your uh, CPC budget. It's your mandatory reservation of funds for open space, 10%, 10% for historic, 10% for housing, and then the remainder goes into the general unreserved fund that can be spent on any project that's eligible. And that's mandated by the state. This yep. is housekeeping. That it's all regulated by the uh, the state of Massachusetts uh, laws and the Department of Revenue uh, bulletins and guidelines. And article 14 is also a CPC article, Community Preservation yep. Committee. And again, this one, Dennis, we're, we've been the last year and this year again coming up, we're, we want to uh, have the admin fund be at 5% because we're using that for the open space planning expenses. Yep. Very good. That you're the chairman of that committee. We appreciate that, and the town appreciates the... Uh, the and that's been helping us pay for the mapping upgrade. Important document, a lot of information, good information. Yep, uh, very important. That's also housekeeping. It has to yep. be done every year. Article 15 is an, another... That is a project. That's an actual project that was applied for through the CPC, and this particular one was related to... Um, playground? Uh, yeah. Let's see. $140,000. Yep, the playground. Relocate, restoration of the current playground that's out at uh, the powder mill? Or yes, the powder mill. That playground at the powder mill, uh, if you see it off of uh, Feeding Hills Road, you'll see that it becomes flooded during high rains. I've seen it, yes. doesn't drain well. Uh, it's not ADA compliant. So th they're looking to resituate it to another place. They've gone through the appropriate planning board site plan approval and permitting. And these funds are going to leverage other funds that the school has put aside in their own capital budget mm -hmm. last year and this year. So it's, it's, a, it's a collection of funds from different um, places. And it's going to help the schools address that issue. And, of course, these playgrounds are also used by people after school's not in session. Absolutely. And the Community Preservation Committee is recommended to bring this to town meeting. Yes, this is a recommended project. And uh, as you know, they also had uh, a number of years ago helped make the uh, track, the new track. Oh, also yeah. and people use and that people all the time. People love that track. It's, it's been a great asset, just like the, um, uh, the rail trail. Mm -hmm. And it's rubberized. Mm -hmm. So that's what people also like. Excellent. Yeah, so it's been great. I don't know if you use it. I get out there and use the track. <laughs> no. You should. You just can't bring Lucky. So Article, we'll skip on that. Article 16 um, is another agricultural, is another CPC article, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah, agricultural yep. preservation restriction. Yep, this was an APR down off of what, Laro Road and um, North Long yet. And uh, there, uh, it had already had a previous appropriation from both the state and the town, but there was a revaluing uh, through another appraisal. And based upon that increase in appraised value, uh, we've been fortunate where the federal government through the state is going to pay half of the increased uh, um, price in that appraisal increase and that the additional monies would then come from the town through uh, additional sleep. So that was the genesis of how that came about. All right. So this isn't a 10%, this is actually half of the... This is half of the increase. If you increase. look at the, the 230 dollars already increase, gotten 230000 Well, this is... No, there's already an amount that's already been appropriated, but this is for... This is for... The balance. This is the, for the... Right, there's 230000 more increase in value 
Half of that will be paid for by federal money, oh, money coming to the and, state, and, now I understand. and the other half will be from uh, the, town. the town. Because the town share before, I believe, Dennis was what only like forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. So the ten percent of the initial. Exactly. So that's why this is this ends up being one hundred and fifteen oh. more to secure that. And people felt it's an important thing, so that there would not be a subdivision built there. Yeah. So. So Article Seventeen. Yep. Article Seventeen. Um, I'm not sure if people are aware, but the old cemetery has been having a lot of uh, plans made and restoration um, studies made on it by an outside consultant working with the cemetery commission and have identified a whole host of things that need to happen over time, which is, uh, um, you know, restoring the grave markers, cleaning them up, making mm -hmm. sure that they're um, uh, positioned so that they don't fall. Sure. Yeah. So there's that issue. There's some of the the roadway in there, some of the trees. There's been trees that have come down and damaged the uh, um, the gravestones. And I'm not sure if you've been by there and seen that. And then um, in the last couple of years, I believe the fencing was replaced. Remember there was fencing replaced? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they took the trees, uh, repaired the fencing, and yeah. Is this, so is so this, this is a, to address the headstone mark. Is there a dollar amount on this? Yes, Dennis. This dollar amount on this is going to be um, uh, 40000 And is this coming from CPC funds? This is coming from, from the CPC. CPC yep, historical. Historical. Fund. Sounds like a good use of the money. Okay. And I'm going to make that 40 k Okay. All right. So I think we're done with the CPA, Community Preservation. Community You're correct. Articles. Yep. All right, and we'll move on to Article 18. Yep, the next one, Dennis, Article 18 is the, um, this Warren article request approval of Southwick's assessment for the school district for next year's operating budget. And this number, Dennis, is $11,552,752. Okay. <laughs> so this is a major, major Warren article, I and it represents so. our share of the school's budget. Wow. So, Article 18. And then Article, so that's Article 18. And again, the schools have already gone through their budget process. They had, pul they had uh, public hearings for it mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, article 19 is the uh, explanation that relates to their capital budget. And their capital budget moratoriums are no longer needed. They're outdated, and so that they need to be removed. Just to clean it up. Just to clean up, because this is something that you know a town meeting in 2017 had put in place. Legislation came in 18, and now they're no longer needed. So now it's time to remove just, them in 2019. Just get rid of them. So. Lastly, Article 23. Sure, Article 23. Uh, represent the town the authority to, for us to enter into a 10-year agreement with additional five-year options for the purpose of receiving and processing recyclables at a local facility. Um, right now, mm -hmm. the agreement that we have over in Springfield to, to bring the stuff over there, there's a facility or a company that runs it, and now that's going to be um, changing, so we need to have authorization to... Um, uh, enter into a new contract with a new entity once those bids are secured. And the important thing is recycling is a requirement. It is. You know, it's, you know, it's good for the environment. It helps mm -hmm. so with source separation in terms of keeping things from going to uh, either landfills or waste energy plants where they're burned. Mm -hmm. So these recyclables, um, you know, have to go to a different location. They have to be sorted separately. They have to be managed differently. So these are the entities that run those facilities. So it would stay the same as now, just another facility? Another vendor. Another vendor. Right. And the important thing to also note, Dennis, is the market for recyclables, you know, um, has been taking a hit overseas. So mm -hmm. the cost of recycling is also going to be going up. Yeah, I heard that. So, but it is it is something that we have to comply with. It is a state law. It is a state regulation. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we have to do and we'll be... We'll be addressing those issues with the um, both Mass DEP and the new entity that will be running this Merck facility um, in Springfield over on Bernie Ave. Bernie Ave. Okay. Excellent. I think you gave a great explanation. I, I have well, a I better understanding you, myself. I thank you for having me. And again, I want to 
uh, remind everybody to both show up to the elections tomorrow, the 14th, as well as attending next Tuesday, the 21st, both the special and annual town meetings. Mm -hmm. um, go on our web pages at you know www.southwickma.org, um, the web page, and, and look at all the different documents, read up all on the it. materials, and read up and prepare yourself and come to town meeting and call your public officials if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Look right. forward to seeing you there. Thank you Look for Channel 15 there. for having me.